Please, do not try any of what you see here at home. We're what you call amateurs. Who are the Mythbusters? Adam Savage. Who are you going to call? Mythbusters. And Jamie Heineman. Between them, less than three hours of special effects experience. They don't just tell the myths, they put them to the test. In this special physics fun episode of Mythbusters, Adam and Jamie will test a rather odd myth about the physics in vacuum power and suction. So Adam, what myth do we have today? Well today, our myth has something to do with this. Transformer toy. What does that have to do with science? Not the toy. I mean the movie Transformers. You see, in, in the movie Transformers 2 Revenge of the Fallen, there's a giant Decepticon named Devastator who can suck things up with his mouth and his throat and it just it's just an awesome epic scene where he's just sucking things up from all around him. Well, that can be tested. We got, we have to check to see whether the vacuum could suck up something such so large as a transformer and yep. suck them up entirely. Yep. All right. Let's do this. Devastator is probably one of my favorite transformers, so I'm excited to see how this will turn out. And they'll keep true to the transformers by using Optimus Prime. and his arch nemesis, Megatron. Now, here's the physics. There are many physics in a vacuum tube. The first of all is the vacuum itself. A vacuum is when there's low pressure, causing high pressure to move towards the low pressure area. A vacuum cleaner itself creates the vacuum by blowing air away from it or using it cycling to create low pressure area. This causes the nozzle to suck air and dust and other objects in the movie, the force from the suction causes the objects to move. We're going to test to see whether the force is strong enough to carry the weight of all the objects. Alright, for this test that we're going to do, we're going to start off with four vacuums, which is probably going to be all the ones that we're going to be using. First one we're going to try is the shop vac. Now that's like a pretty high quality industrial kind. I think this might be the kind we might use, I don't know. But uh, then after that comes the upright vac, you know, the kind that you probably have at home used to move back in the kitchen floor or whatever. I'm not so sure about this one, but uh, I don't know, maybe it has more suction, no one knows for sure. Um, we next we have cylinder vacuum, which I have at home, used to vacuum my carpets. I don't know, that, that, that's, that's probably pretty close in comparison to the shop vac, but we'll have to find out. And the last one we're going to be using is the backpack vacuum. Now this one, I'm not com I mean, I've never really seen one of these in use before, so it's going to be, I'm kind of iffy about it, because I'm not sure if it's going to work, but we'll have to see. We're starting off with the shop back first. We're going to be testing our Bachman's Prime at one inch. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Closer to half an inch. Moving with the right next to it. Optimus will definitely not work. Well, this was a bust. Apparently, the shop back does not have enough suction to lift even the light toy. I think we'll try with Megatron now. He is slightly lighter than Optimus. Three, two, one, go. Moving closer. Moving. Slightly closer.
The Megatron toy was slightly lighter, so we should, we'll probably use that one for our final test. And now we're going to move on to the backpack vacuum. So we're going to start with Megatron first. One inch. Three, two, one. I think this one has less suction than the shop vac. So as you can see, these tests with the shop vac and the backpack vac are failures because there wasn't enough suction. And this we can tie in with physics with Newton's first law of motion which states that an object will stay at rest unless an opposite force is reacted upon it. Now with the with the Transformers toys, there wasn't enough of the, and there wasn't enough suction to act upon it to suck it forward, so it stayed at rest. And that's why we need a vacuum that has a lot more suction. And I think we can find that out later. So we cut to Adam's house, where the upright and cylinder vacs will be tested. Alright, so now we're going to test out this upright vacuum. All right, let's set him up. All right, this is Cyclone Vacuum in three, two, one. <laughs> I think that this, since this is a smaller nozzle, it probably won't be able to get as much suction out of it. So this one, I probably won't, you probably won't choose this one, but we'll have to see. We have one more vacuum left. Indeed they do. And while Adam sets up the next vacuum, they give their thoughts on what the outcome will be. I think the cylinder vacuum will probably be even powerful than the backpack vacuum due to its slightly shorter tube length and it's very compact hose at the tip. So I actually think that this the cylinder vac is going to act is going to suck it up way better than all the other vacuums. Like I can already see it's already powerful. You can see it from the cylinder it's going to it's going to just I think it's going to do it right right away. Like all the others we have to go closer, but I think this one's going to do it right away. Let's see. All right, now it's time to do the gas handled um, cylinder vacuum. All right. This is cylinder vacuum in three, two, one. I think this one has a good chance. I think we might actually use this one, if not the backpack one. But sadly, our episode must come to an end, because Adam and Jamie have no way to do a final test. Now they'll explain what the outcome of this myth will be. Confirmed, plausible, or busted. So, how do you think this went? Well, I think this myth has definitely been busted. Yeah, I agree. Cause even though like we have we even though we didn't calculate the amount of the you know the mass of the toy or the amount of suction, it's still very unlikely that a really heavy full size transformer would be able to get sucked into a giant vacuum no matter how much force there would be involved. Yes, the size of it itself would require immense suction <laughs> and the air itself to be able to get something that's over thirty meters away that weighs several hundred tons. To be able to propel it quickly for the air would be impossible. I agree. Let's call it busted. Yes. And although this myth is busted, maybe they'll find an even more powerful vacuum. But that's another episode.